I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal and the host of Opinion Journal each day at WSJ.com. We now travel to Australia, as is our want. Mary's pleased with the music. Because there's, pleased. An, I love this there's an election underway in Australia that defies my understanding of how governance works. This will be a little bit of a difficult explanation, won't it, Mary? The last time we were here, Mary, the... Uh, Australian Labour Party was in total disarray. Oh, they were getting it, crushed. And they were they were behind double digits, right? Oh, double, yeah. They, they were behind double digits in the polls to the party that, though it sounds like it's liberal when we give you its name, is actually the conservative, more Republican party led by Mr. Abbott. Called the Liberal Party. Called the Liberal Party. And in Australian politics, it's a parliamentary system. Uh, the party that has the majority seats in the legislature is the one that names the prime minister and names the cabinet. And though the election was tied the, la- tied the last time, uh, two or three independents, three, three independents, uh, ordinarily associating themselves with conservative uh, temperament, had sided with the Labour Party. I think they were well, is, is the word bribe polite, Mary, in Australia? Yeah. Uh, Power hungry. They were, they were given inducements, and they chose to vote with the Labour, and that left a man by the name of Kevin Rudd, the Prime Minister. That was then. Tim Wilson joins us from Australia, from Melbourne. A very good morning to you, Tim. Tim is at the Independent Policy Institute, and the reason we ask Tim's help is because I've only gotten to the part of the story that makes sense. Uh, Tim, <laughs> a very good morning to you. The last time we spoke, Julia Gillard was losing back Badly as the Prime Minister of Labor. However, I've skipped something here, haven't I? Yes, you have. <laughs> How did she get to be the Prime Minister of Labor, and why now is Mr. Rudd again the Prime Minister? Over to you, Tim. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, John. And trying to give a quick summary, in 2007, Kevin Rudd was elected Prime Minister. In 2010, Julia Gillard rolled him as Prime Minister because, of course, uh, the, the leader is chosen by the party, not by the public. Uh, and then he has consistently undermined her during the time that uh, she has been Prime Minister until a couple of weeks ago where Kevin Rudd has managed to topple her again and is now the leader of the Labor Party and therefore Prime Minister of the country. Oh, that's an excellent summary. And and he seems to have revived Labor's fortunes in the polls. I, I'm, I'm reading The Australian this morning, Tim. It, it jumped eight percentage points, saving up to 13 Labor-held seats. How can this be? Uh, That's right. Basically, uh, at the last poll that was taken with Julia Gillard as uh, Prime Minister, their primary vote, uh, which we have a preferential system, so preferences get distributed, but her primary vote was 29%. It's lifted up now to about 38%, which is a significant improvement, and when you throw other parties on top of it, it means that they're competitive in the election. Uh, And this is fundamentally, I think, a a temporary thing because uh, the Australian people always viewed the way that Kevin Rudd was torn down in the first place as though he was a victim. He has now reclaimed his mantle and so they see that as a more just uh, approach and therefore uh, they're prepared to accept that he's torn down uh, the person who replaced him. It's a, it's a temporary uh, glitch which is around a sense of sympathy and also a preparedness and openness to hear what he's got to offer. The question is will it remain and I'm not convinced it will because all of the policy problems that Julia Gillard had which meant she got low polls came from uh, Kevin Rudd's bad decisions when he was Prime Minister the first time and they're still haunting him. Mr. Wilson let's turn to policy because I understand celebrity works and sympathy works but Kevin Rudd leads a party that made promises at the election, and uh, one of them had to do with climate and carbon tax. And my last version of what happened is the public was lied to, misled, and abused by the Labor Party. Is that all accurate? Is that still in place? Has Mr. Rudd explained that? Uh, No, he hasn't explained that. So Julia Gillard went to the 2010 election and said these exact words, there will be no carbon tax under a government I lead. Pretty clear. She then got into government, very clear, then got into government and legislated the carbon tax and Kevin Rudd voted for it. And so he's now in a position where he's got to decide what he's going to do, but there's no intention to roll back the carbon tax, only to perhaps move it towards a more floating price through a cap-and-trade mechanism. 
which means that the price will essentially be set by Europe. It's a, a toxic issue for, for the Labor Party that they haven't quite figured out how to address yet. Tim, refresh my memory. I, I remember in 07, Kevin Rudd ran for office as a moderate. And yet when he came in, he spent a ton of money and he regulated the labor market into, I don't know, asphyxiation, <laughs> strikes everywhere. Um, has he said anything about that? Is he going to roll any of that back? Is he going to recant? Is he going to acknowledge what a failure it all was? I think you're being too charitable, Mary. In 2007, he ran as a conservative, not as a moderate. He actually used to use the phrase, I am an economic conservative, uh, when he was running for office. And people bought that, and that was part of the reason the public felt comfortable switching from our then Prime Minister, John Howard, over to Kevin Rudd, because they said, well, we've got a choice between two economic conservatives, but one's younger and new and energetic, and one's been in the job for a while. Then he got into office, you're right, and spent a ton of money wasted billions of dollars and the government continues to do so and no they haven't really come up with a solution in fact yesterday he gave a an address to uh, what's the equivalent of sort of the white house correspondence group and uh said what we should do to improve australia's economy australia's competitiveness is get rid of you know all of these different regulatory measures and taxes and everything else and literally it was every single measure that either he or Julia Gillard over the past few years have been responsible for. It's like saying if we, the best way for Australia's economy to be competitive is to get rid of ourselves. We're speaking with Tim Wilson, who's the Director of Climate Change Policy at the Institute of Public Affairs. And what we've just learned, I believe, Mary, is that this makes no sense. We were right to be confused. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. Because I'm well, I think what I've learned, if we summarize so far, is that uh, Gillard and Rudd have made misled the public and the public keeps rewarding them so they have no incentive to change their uh, change their ways is there something wrong with mr abbott i don't know about tim as he uh, is he in the hire of enemies of australia is he unacceptable as a prime minister uh, he built his early reputation in politics as a, a, a a Catholic conservative crusader and some people I think their minds have been fixed on that uh, and if they're not uh, of that faith or they don't share his values are very unwilling to listen to him but otherwise he, uh, he he's actually changed and become a much more moderate person in the meantime uh, and much more accessible to the public and so I, I think a lot of your confusion is sound and rational uh, but I think the Australians always like to give somebody a fair go. They're giving Kevin Rudd a fair go at the moment and should there be a change of government and Tony Abbott's elected Prime Minister, they will also give him a fair go if he's in office. Tim, is it unfair to characterize Abbott as a Bush-like compassionate conservative, a guy who would tax you to reach his social goals like time off for, you know, uh, uh, mothers and, and, and such I think the answer in short is yes. He's actually got some very strange policies for a conservative at times. Uh, he has one where the government is going to levy big business to uh, basically pay for mothers to stay off work after they've had children so they can have a choice about whether uh, they want to go back into the workforce in a short period of time. Uh, he's had a number of uh, the uh, a position changing the constitution recently, uh, which is not as rigid as the US's uh, constitution in some ways, but around recognising local government, and that currently doesn't exist and would basically uh, destroy the very nature of federalism in Australia. So uh, I think he has an inconsistent message, and maybe that's partly what's hampering his capacity to connect with people. The election is still expected in September, is that right, Tim? No, it's not. Julia Gillard announced the election in January to be September 14. Kevin Rudd, since he's got back, is now making us all play a guessing game, but the hot tip is now at the end of August, not in September. How does that help him? Uh, it means that it's thrown the opposition off their footing uh, and they don't quite know how to plan or strategize on, in timelines and they're going to make the decision about going to the election based on when the polls show that they're doing their best at the moment they're up to uh, uh, two party preferred vote of 50 percent so they're competitive it might be their best chance rather than waiting a bit longer so and all the policy problems coming back to haunt them tim they're going to rush to the polls before people figure out what the guy actually mr rudd actually stands for that's the strategy Yep. 
Uh, well, let us review what I recall about Kevin Rudd and what he did wrong. All right, why he was thrown over by his own side. Uh, wasn't he aloof and arrogant and dictatorial and deceitful? Were, were, uh, am I remembering correctly, Tim? You are remembering correctly, but most of that was towards his own colleagues and the bureaucrats, and so the public never really saw that in its full uh, in, in uh, its full consequences. Wasn't there a flight attendant that he that he berated uh, and and made cry? Some sort of Air Force uh, officer. Uh, that's correct. They they didn't bring him a hot meal after he got on his VIP plane, and so he had an outburst. And that did get some attention, as did a video that was circulated where he's swearing unend- un- unendingly against uh, bureaucrats in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Well, I understand Foreign that. Service. I mean, that, that that's understandable. <laughs> I, I, wa- I want to take one more chance uh, uh, t- that I get this right. Now, I like the idea of a country giving a, a politician a fair go, but at this point, I think the term moral hazard enters into this because <laughs> if if Mr. Rudd is returned to the Prime Ministry, isn't doesn't he have a license to abuse absolutely everyone and figure it's going to be to his advantage? Uh, the answer is yes, and he, not just in terms of personality, but also in terms of policy, because if the Australian public vote for the current government to uh, be returned, they will be effectively endorsing the past three years, including massive costs, regulations, new taxes, and uh, and giving him a new mandate. And it will be such... Uh, Kevin is such an egocentric man that he will take it personally as a vindication of him and his vision. Right. And uh, I fear for the country at that point. Tim Wilson, uh, we thank him very much. He's the Director of Climate Change Policy and Intellectual Property and Free Trade Unit at the Institute of Public Affairs. Uh, Mary Kissel of the Editorial Board of the Wall Street Journal, the host of Opinion Journal each day, Australia. It's at 1 p.m. East Coast time. That's easy for you. Uh, At WSJ.com, I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.